goalkeeper. That's game over. He's back at the Amex. And he's back for the goal in front of the adoring Arsenal fans. The Eagles have had enough. They're going home. The Arsenal fans are absolutely loving it. And the Saka scoring again and Trossard scoring on his return to the Amex. Arsenal have been too good for Brighton. Today we're heading to the south-south coast of Brighton. Not to check out the pier, but to head to the Amex as Brighton and Hove Albion take on Arsenal. Brighton have been a bit inconsistent this season. They had a couple of great results in the Europa League, topping their group, but then crashed out to Roma. They'll be looking to head back in the Europa or the Conference League this season. Arsenal are riding high and playing some of the best football in the league, but this is a tricky away day, so I'm praying that Brighton can get a result against the Gooners today. So if you are enjoying the venture, smash that like, hit that big red subscribe button. Who is taking the W today? Hopefully Brighton up the seagulls but yeah if you haven't checked out the crystal palace versus city vlog make sure to check it out we've literally just been there time to head to the amex ladies and gentlemen welcome to the beginning of this very abrupt video today we are off to brighton versus arsenal now we have just come from selhurst park we are literally walking to norwood junction station after seeing city batter crystal palace so hopefully come on i can't say that too well but in this area but come on brighton Hopefully they can get a result against Arsenal. Let's go. Well, the train goes in one minute and the queue to get in the station is absolutely rammed. The next one's in half an hour. I do have plenty of time uh, to get to the Amex. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think this is a bit of a banana skin for Arsenal. Again, I can't say it, but hopefully um, the Seagulls can do us some business because we got the business done against the Eagles today. This is mad. I might go and get some flipping lunch. I've not ate since flipping Greg's breakfast this morning. Oh, not a good start. I was looking for somewhere to eat, this'll do. My second breaks of the day. I'm literally so obsessed. I'm not gonna say no, it was literally the first thing. I turned right out of Norwood Junction. First thing that I was I liked, I was gonna eat and well, I love Greg's. Well we've made it on the train, it is time to head back to the Amex. I'm very, very excited, very nervous. Hopefully the right can do us a favor. I'm still surrounded by Dallas man, so well, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to Brighton, we have made it to the station, it is absolutely packed. Brian did say that this was very severely disorganised because I've always drove in to come to Brighton, parked at the race course and got the bus, never had an issue. This is an absolute mosh pit from what I've seen, uh, so getting to the stadium on time is going to be hard. It's 42 minutes past 6 now, so 20 to 7, uh, 20 to 5. Uh, we need to, we've got 50 minutes to get there. I'm going to see if I can find a bus outside, maybe that will get me there. But the fact is that the stadium is in the middle of the hills and far away, it is hard to get to. But the thing that I'm stressing most about is I just can't get uh, the City Crystal Palace video out. Like, I've been trying and trying and trying, and it's given me eight hours on five bars of 5G. I just can't get it out. I'm really just frustrated. But anyway, Arsenal versus uh, Brighton. Let's find a bus or get on the train, and then we'll go over the teams. I'm hoping that Brighton can, well, can do something. They've had some fantastic nights here in Europe at the Amex. Can they have another fantastic night in the Premier League against Arsenal? I'm not too sure you know Arsenal are very good aren't they the Brighton need to stop Arsenal scoring and that is the priority if Arsenal score early it's a question of how many do they get I remember them coming here last year bit of a banana skin Brighton away nobody other than Arsenal in the top six actually came to Brighton and won and Arsenal scored after four minutes and that's exactly what we don't want today so yeah up the Brighton this is one of the biggest trains that I've ever seen it's also one of the most disorganized places to get on the train to get to the stadium it doesn't help that the stadium is absolutely miles away from Brighton there's a hell of a lot of Arsenal fans here by the way I think I feel like there's way more than 3,000 Arsenal fans here anyway let's jump on the train and get to the Amex up the Brighton this is supposed to be the busiest train ever not one person in the front carriage like everybody just gets on at the back because it's the closest one I always just have a little walk up and look at this I have got a table to myself let's go over the teams while no one's here well, no surprises, Arsenal are just full strength, no injuries, no problems, it's just a full strength team, other than Martinelli's not playing, it's going to be Havertz, Jesus and Saka in that front three, so the only one missing is Martinelli, Brighton have got massive, massive injury woes, but at least NCSO's back, last time I was here at the Amex Stadium, he scored the goal of the season against City, it was absolutely fantastic, but yeah, still nobody around, but Arsenal, always full strength, as they are, they don't get any injury problems, but Brighton... Maybe Danny Welbeck against his old club might be able uh, to help the Seagulls get a win today. Who knows what's going to happen, but I'm enjoying my train carriage to myself. 
let's get to the stadium. The Brighton. Well, we've made it into the Amex. We are ready. The Brighton fans and the Arsenal fans are ready. Hopefully, Brighton can do us a big favour. But we've all watched Arsenal this season. We all know how good they are. We all know how hard of a game this is going to be for Brighton. But they've done it in Europe. They've had a brilliant result. Uh, a last minute Jao Pedro goal. They have they may have lost a power, but they beat Ajax here and they also beat Marseille here. Well, they can do it. I believe. Uh, the here we go. Oh, yeah. I'm ready for this one. The fireworks and the fire in front of Brighton and Arsenal. Here we go. Fantastic two fellas deserving. What a manager he is. I just hope he stays. And hopefully the Brighton fans will hope that he stays as well. Here we go. Help us out and help themselves out by getting into Europe for next season and going on another adventure. It was so great to see you guys get Ajax and Marseille and Athens because that's an amazing away day as well. Here we go. Come on, Brighton. Hard to give the award of the most disgusting pit this season to Arsenal. That is vile. Looks like a zebra in green. Brighton's a solid. Oh, come on, Brighton. What a view I've got for 20 quid. Not bad at all. Anyway, it's corner for Brighton. Come on, get this on the money. In it comes. It's not a bad one. Oh. And it's all on the edge of the box. It's the Pina. It's knocking around in there. And there's an Arsenal player down. It's got the end of a Brighton attack. It's disappointing. It's head injury. But we've got to stop the fight. For Brighton. And Sissou! Oh, what a block from Ben Blanco. Great move from Brighton. Good start for Brighton. This positive down the right-hand side. And Sissou's closing dangers on the left-hand side too. Good start. Well, Vakayo Saka's just had the best chance of the game, running down the left-hand side after being sent from Martin Odegaard really nicely, cuts inside this left foot, he had so much time, he thought he was going to take it on his right, no, he decided to cut in on his left, and literally the left side of the goal, way open, and he's curled it wide, what's up with him? A minute later, the struggle's come up with a huge shake to keep Arsenal out, and Brighton still in the game, they're starting to mount the pressure of Arsenal after Brighton came close from a little shot from outside the box that we saw, Flipping, had a great save. Nice penalty to Arsenal. Don't know what Martin is thinking. Jesus gets his head down. First time he's run at the right back, and it was an absolute chaotic challenge. It looks like all the Brighton fans are saying, oh, I look like you have the ball. Step up penalty. You can see it from down here. Kyle Saka then is going to step up to potentially give Arsenal the lead in a very cagey game. But Saka to step up, hopefully misses. He's not had the best game so far. Pressure on him. Here he goes. Puts the goalkeeper the wrong way. Big goal for Arsenal. In a game that's been very tight there, they've not had a lot of chances. Taking the lead. Mm -hmm. and I think these lot enjoyed that. Hundreds of them here enjoying the Saka goal. He's not had the best game so far, Saka, but he's got the all important moment. I don't know what Lamptey was thinking over there. A one match of concentration could cost you in this league, and that's exactly what it's done to Brighton. Who have had good plays, but for the last 20 minutes, Arsenal dominated. But mainly in the midfield, they haven't really had any chances. The goalkeeper made a good save on like 10 minutes, and then Jesus decides to get his head down, run at Lamptey. Poor challenge, penalty kick, tucked away nicely from Saka. Brighton have got a mountain to climb. It's exactly what we didn't want to happen. Arsenal's going first, and it's exactly what has happened. They're in command of this game now. Brighton hit back straight away, they need to. Left the ball behind, hits it, and is blocked by his own teammate. And Ciso is screaming for it on his left hand side, and it's just not having a good game. So that's a very soft foul to be on this one. Free kick for Brighton. Arsenal for now, the top of the table, but Brighton, we need a goal. I, I don't see him scoring. Arsenal's defence is just too good to be honest, but hopefully. If I'm a set piece, that might be the way to break down this Arsenal incredible back four. In it comes, and there's Gabriel to knock it away. And Saka makes sure I don't go for a corner, and they like that. But this game's extremely cagey. Far few chances between both teams. I mean, Arsenal probably had the best chance with that Saka one very, very early on when he cut inside and probably should have netted. But other than that, Arsenal have been keeping the ball in the midfield well. And Brighton have had chances to get the ball to the works, and Cesar's causing the most problems. But they keep going to the right hand side and they keep making mistakes. Uh, Danny Welbeck's looking bright, but he's dropping too deep, which means there's no target man in the middle. I don't know what's going on. I think Brighton just. A little bit overthinking this because, well, that says how good Arsenal the back four is, and you're going to have to do something special to beat them. Whether you drop your man back in, uh, such as Welbeck, to send your wingers, but they're not doing that because the CISO is getting ignored, and he's the best player in my opinion. Pena gets it back. Havertz is the only one back. Come back and profit. See, Welbeck's coming too deep. It's too deep. He should be in the box. 
mad how many Arsenal players go down injured, yet every time they put an 11 out for every game, they have no one injured. San Francisco, taking on Saka, beating him. Wants to do what he did against Saka. To do what he did against Seto, and he nearly did. Right up with a brilliant save. Oh, I wish that went in. It's a really underrated save. I mean, Bayern was in a good position, starting position. He's learned his lesson from the game at the Draghi Hour against Porto. That was a better shot than the one uh, that Porto had. Brilliant save from the Spanish man. But seven minutes amount of time in the first half. The amount of key ball that's gone on, a penalty. Snooze fest at the moment, to be honest, but Arsenal winning this snooze fest, and that's all they care about. But a lot of injuries, and like I said before, why are the Arsenal players always on the floor, always got injuries, but miraculously they're all okay? Time wasting, or just to get the tactics in gear, I don't know. Southampton do it as well. We found a wild seagull, there's another one there, they're everywhere. It's hilarious, there's two seagulls just flying around in the stands. Can we find any more? more entertainment those could have caused and what's on the pitch. That's all we're in. Finally caught Brighton on the break here. There we go, Havertz, balls it across. Could have gone anywhere, could have gone in the back of their own net. It was a Brighton body that got there, got themselves on it before it reached Havertz. And Benny Blanco has just stolen the ball back from in Ciso. There we go. Back heels it back to Saka. Benny Blanco is surely outside there. Flag stays down. Rice. Finally, the flag goes up. That's the biggest cheer of the day. Well, it was booze. I think it was for the ref for giving the pen. It was a pen, let's be honest. And uh, yeah, it's 1-0. Uh, oh, my days. We've got half-time here at the Amex Stadium, and it is 1-0 to Arsenal. A dodgy penalty. Brighton fans not happy with the referee either. He's been booed going into the Arsenal half. Well, not booed, but he's been booed going into the dressing room at half-time. I don't think Brighton have done enough. I don't think they've gotten CISO involved in the game as much as they should have done. Brighton have been booed going into the dressing room at half-time. I don't think they've gotten CISO involved in the game as much as they should have done. Every time that the ball has been floating around the midfield, they should be going down that left-hand side. They seem to be taking a hold to the right-hand side, and it's just not working. Well, back to dropping deep, not really creating anything. If you're going to drop deep, you need to distribute the ball out to the wings and then get into the middle to be able to take a chance. But well, that's just sitting on the edge of the box, allowing him to just have space, but no options. When he's drawn the ball across the box, there's been nobody there. So he's resulted to taking shots on the edge of the box. And one of them came really close. It's a really good save from David Raya. I don't know what Lamptey's thinking uh, with a foul on Jesus like that. Just dived in like an absolute moron and uh, Saka puts away the penalty convincingly. It's a big goal for Arsenal in a big game for Arsenal. They need to take results here and uh, hopefully Brighton have got some good results against some good sides this season. Hopefully they can get another one. Up the Amex. No, not up the Amex. That's where we are. Up the singles. Well, Brighton have started the second half by pressing up completely, squeezing in Arsenal. That's probably not the way to go. It'd be good for the first 10 minutes, but then when Brighton get tired like they did, especially at the end of the first half, Arsenal are just going to keep <coughs> coming and coming and coming and coming. And another goal for Arsenal, it's game over. I might as well go home. <laughs> so I've got corner here. Just Brighton just need to get this ball away. Arsenal pretty dangerous in set pieces. Brighton's going to take it. In it comes. Deep one. Oh my days. Two men completely free. Habit to Gabriel. Arsenal play with the handball, they're not going to get it though. Maybe they are, because uh, Arsenal were about to take the throw in, even if it was there. Throw in, there we go, the referees said go for it now. This is a really nervy second half, Brighton, disciplined, but need to play some better football when attacking. Corner for Brighton, in it comes, come on. Saka deals with it, it's going to be five, but oh dear mate. Oh well, it's worked for Esther Pinya. oh my days. If that second one goes in, that would have been mental. I think a certain piece is the way to score today for Brighton. Uh, they just alter in normal play. Unless the Serbia's going to make some. Oh, what a surprise. Another Arsenal player down. They're the Arsenal player. They're just going to grind Brighton down. And they're going to score like two or three in the 80th minute. Unless Brighton can, can do something. Because at the moment, it's just Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. Knock it round, knock it round. And then make Brighton tire. Make a mistake. And that's it. Seagulls are back. <laughs> <laughs> we love the seagulls. Don't diss the seagulls. Ah, oh, bless him. He's loving it though. <laughs> Break it for Brighton. Take control. I think they are missing. Solid march to bang those balls into the box. It's good that Isiso's back. Takes to the byline. Does well. Spreads it across. I think it's a corner. It is. 
we go. The longer this stays 1 0, the more chance Brighton will have to get a goal. They've done it against Liverpool. They nearly did it again against Liverpool. They love beating Man United. Up the sequels. It's time for Deserve to start changing something because Welbeck is acting as that target man that comes deep, like I say. But Saliba every time. Saliba's too good. He's one of the best centre backs in world football, if not the best. Every time he just wins that ball so easily. And uh, yeah, not working. Welbeck either needs to play behind Saliba or go off the pitch. That's game over. Let's have a look at poor from Brighton. Saka went down. That allowed Brighton just to lose the momentum of the ball. And in it went behind. Pulled across the face, great finishing that hurts. The ball across is fantastic. That's wrapped it up. My fans know that it is a big goal. And Kai Havertz, 60 million down the drain. He scores again. Big goal. It's game over this. Arsenal won this one. Disappointed from Brighton. They've never really got going, especially in that final third. It's been so much on the so and he's just he can't do it on his own. Now Pedro's back on. Very well injured. Hopefully you can create something, but there's no way Brian is going to. And they know it's one. Kai Havertz has scored again. In some form, isn't it? 15 minutes to go in this game, and uh, well, Brighton need a goal immediately if they want anything from it. But Arsenal have just been too good for Brighton today, especially the defence. It's like, well, Beck's not even had a bad game, and I was slated him a lot. It's just how good Saliba and Gabriel are, mainly Saliba. And it just, they make it look easy. Really, as I was talking, Antti Fatty comes on. He probably should have started, to be honest. Welbeck comes off. I mean, the change has been made. Me and Deserve are watching the same game. Seagulls have had enough. They're going home on the 80th minute. And the Arsenal fans are absolutely loving it. And bless the Seagulls, man. Dinks it round the keeper. That's game over. He's back at the Amex. And he's back for the goal. He will walk out. That is game set match to Arsenal. And the Brighton fans have seen enough. Great calm to post finish from Leandro Trossard. Can I say Arsenal deserve it? Yes. They've been way the better team in this game. And uh, everyone's gone. Everyone's gone. It's just me. It's just me vibing and enjoying this game. Because Arsenal, yet again, have entertained me. Especially in the second half, they've been really good. And that's, that's it, that's game over. Not another one. Please, not another one. Oh, it's not a bit another one. Well, this is going to be a brilliant result from Arsenal to take them back to the top of the Premier League. What a title race we're getting. That's it. Arsenal take the three points. Huge win for the Gunners. They're back to the top of the league. Arsenal fans singing, we are top of the league. We are top of the league. What a result for them. Well, there we go then, full time, and it's the Arsenal fans that you can hear. 3 0 to Arsenal. They are top of the league, to be fair. Had a great result for them. And it started in the first half. Jesus, brilliant skill, poor challenge from Lamptey. Penalty, and that's controlled and dictated the game. But Brighton still had a couple of chances at 1 0. Danny Welbeck's just been invisible, and he's just not been able to do anything because of how good Saliba and Gabriel have been today. And yet again, that Arsenal centre back pairing is just too good. And the Arsenal back four is just too good. And Brighton have had no answers to be able to get through on the attack. And Arsenal just been able to just kill them off minute by minute in midfield, keeping the ball. Martin Erdogan's been terrific. And it was Saka that went down, slipped through Jorginho. Jorginho crossed it in. Havertz made it 2 0. Stadiums are empty everywhere they go. There's, there's no one around me. It's, it's literally game over. Um, full time here. But 3 0 was made from Leandro Trossard back here at the Amex with a big goal. And Arsenal go to the top. They've got a massive game during the week against Bayern Munich. And Bayern Munich lost today. Arsenal have won. And they're going into this game with pure confidence, pure belief. And it's at the Emirates. I can see Arsenal doing them. I can see Arsenal getting a result. So good luck to you guys. I always get behind English teams in Europe. Other than Manchester United and Liverpool. Hope those to hope Liverpool go out. Uh, but they're probably going to win the Europa League, aren't they? If you guys have enjoyed the vlog, make sure to smash that like. Hit that big red subscribe button. What a win for Arsenal. Good luck against Bayern Munich, like I said, at the end. Huge, huge win this. Back to the top of the league, Arsenal. Brighton have been outplayed, not been good enough. And Arsenal, just too good. Like and subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace out. See you in Madrid.